This is my impression of Welt if Welt was voiced by Braxophone. Hello guys, I am Welt and I, I am voiced by Braxophone. Today I wanted to go over what to do at TR40. A lot of people are finally getting there and I'm there on my free to play account right now. Oh wait, this isn't my free to play account. Hold okay, now we're on my free to play account. What the f So you've reached TR40 on your free to play and you're not swiping for trailblaze power. And let's say you have a bunch of trailblaze fuel left. I still have 14 left. I haven't finished farming, obviously. It takes a while to farm right now because you're under geared. Yeah, you, you're under geared too. I know you're under geared unless you went and farmed and, and you're not under geared, but hopefully you're under geared because now you can spend it all and you can get over geared or just regular geared. The thing is tier 30 to 40 is a pretty big jump in power level because when you get to 40, that's when you're guaranteed to start getting five star relics. In Genshin Impact, you are guaranteed four star relics until AR 45, but they stretched out the scaling a little bit in this game. So now tier 40 are guaranteed a five star relic and five star relics are going to be the end game for you because you're gonna spend the rest of your life farming for these once you get your characters leveled. So speaking of which, you're going to immediately, once you hit TR40, you want to ascend characters to 60. Now, I don't mean you need to ascend every character in your roster to 60. Like most of my characters aren't even leveled. What worked out for me is making sure that I had a team that I was ready to farm most content with. So having most hype coverage, strong damage dealers, a preservation and an abundance character. That way it can kind of auto farm because obviously you have a bunch of trailblaze power to burn through. It's going to take you a long time. And for that, I ended up choosing Scylla just because she's very, very strong. Natasha, Fireblazer, who's on physical right now and Serval who I ascended to 60 but I did not yet level up. So the benefit of having a team like this is that you have lots of different type coverage and you also have characters now that can deal high damage and you have a character to sustain and you have a character that can cleanse and can heal as it's going to be very integral for the farming that you're going to be doing here very soon. So first things first you ascend you figure out what you need to ascend for Zilla, it's void cast iron. So you're going to go to the stagnant shadow over here and you're going to spend some of your trailblaze power over here. Now, does that mean you have to spend fuel? Not necessarily. You actually don't have to burn through all of this fuel at all. If you don't want to, you could save all this fuel for later. And we'll talk about that because a lot of people are really stuck on if they should save for 40 or 50, but your goal should be to level up your characters and ascend your characters. Because what that does is it increases their base stats. As you can see, just by ascending, I get a base stat increase, but then by leveling up, I get another base stat increase. And the benefit of base stats is if you don't know, base stats are what your relics actually scale off of. So if you have an attack percent relic, or if you have attack buffs coming in from your team, that takes the base attack, which is going to be a combination of your light cone and the character's actual stats, and uses those stats to finalize your actual stat value. This means that by raising your base stats, you are effectively making your relic stronger, which effectively makes you stronger. Personally, I recommend leveling everything to 60 first, and by everything, I just mean a team that you can farm with. If you want to be extra safe, you can can take another character like if you wanted to use Don Hung because he has wind and typing you could go and ascend him to 60 as well and that could also be really helpful for your damage if you need that wind coverage and so that's just a good example of what you can do but next this is a part that everyone argues about for actually no reason it's kind of it's kind of weird you now have the choice to farm relics or to farm for your character's traces there's multiple schools of thought here if you go to your character's traces a lot of these are going to bring you some value just as raw stat increases and raw multiplier increases if i leveled up march's skill i would be getting a higher percentage of her defense for the shield but i'd also be getting a higher flat amount here so this 389 would increase and this is going to be a huge increase for you same with sila as as well right if you want to increase Sila's damage the most surefire consistent way to do it is going to be to level up their traces because that's going to give you a multiplier regardless of how your luck is on relics on top of that you have these small traces that increase your attack your crit damage etc and these are also just straight up stat boosts that you can get for actually relatively cheap they don't take a lot of resources now I'm not going to act like it's the end of the world if you ignore your traces like even I'm not like fully maxed out on my traces yet I I've been ignoring them to farm for some relics and things it it's really not the end of the world and I think way too many people are like no you you need to you need to farm your traces it's fine the thing is you're going to have to farm relics eventually anyways waiting until you're guaranteed two relics means waiting until TR 60 waiting till TR 60 means that you're going to be playing at equilibrium level three and four for a very long time with very minimal damage compared to what you could be doing and it's honestly just not going to be very fun if you like giga whale then it's not really a problem for you because you could just use your whale powers to just crush everything but even then you could be level 50 right now so like this isn't even a video that you 
need to worry about. Personally, I found that going for traces like these can be very, very helpful. This is actually next on my list is grabbing the self heal for fire blazer, but you only have to level up the traces that are immediately useful. For example, I could get this attack increase for fire blazer for slightly more damage. However, I'm more worried about sustainability for this unit than anything else. Now I have all of these materials, so I'm actually just going to activate it, right? It's not a huge deal, but if you're struggling for materials and you need to figure out what to farm and what's valuable, things like this, the defense increase on fire blazer are going to be very, very valuable because they're unconditional. Now, once again, you do not have to max out your characters in your traces first, but you can do that. And I think it's a good way to get dedicated and guaranteed stats no matter what. So let's talk about what relics are worth going for and investing in and which ones are going to be the most efficient for your stamina. When I say farm for relics, I don't mean in the same way that you do for Genshin Impact. In Genshin, you might get a, a headpiece or something, and if it doesn't have crit damage and crit rate, you just drop it. You don't need to do that in this game right now. Eventually, that will be your standard. But at the moment, as everything is new, and as you are just looking for raw stats and damage increases and sustainability increases, you care more about the main stats than anything else. You'll eventually replace artifacts but if you just keep going at this one domain without ever leveling up your artifacts you're gonna be doing it really really slow you're not gonna be able to do any of the other content in the game until you get the relic that you're looking for what are you looking at and you're probably not gonna have a good time so what relics do i recommend farming for that are the most trailblaze power efficient well let's look at all of these so basically here you have your fire set your imaginary set you have the tanking set the preservation set and you have the lightning set you have this resistance set and you have the quantum set you have healing set and general attack and speed set. You have physical set and break set, and then you have ice set and wind set. Right off the bat, you can cross some of these off. Imaginary fire set, unless you are building welt and hook together, you don't have to worry about these right now. This will be efficient for you if you are building those two units or Himiko as well. But if you're not building those three units right off the bat, then you don't have to worry about it. Remember, we want to level up something like two damage dealers and an abundance and a preservation. If you want to make sure that you can survive auto farming and just have an okay balanced team while you work on farming for other characters. Now over here, if you have Sila, you probably want to farm Genius of Brilliant Stars, which you absolutely should eventually. But right now, you just need stats, right? And it would be nice to have those stats on a set that you can use on a lot of different characters. Guard of Weathering Snow, unfortunately, you're probably not going to be using. And Genius of Brilliant Stars, I mean, you can just throw it on anyone if it has the right main stat, but it's not going to be a huge buff to them if they're not quantum. Same with the Fizz set. Uh, the Break set is all right to farm for, but I, I wouldn't recommend it unless you are building someone like Clara at the same time. Wind and Ice set could be useful if you have Yunching and Dunhung. And the Wind set's also good for Bronya and for other supports. So I actually think that this domain is really valuable. But the two winners for the different caverns that you're going to want to farm in are going to be the healer and wheat set and the preservation and lightning set. So I'll start from the bottom here. The preservation set, the thing is that everyone on preservation right now scales on defense. That means that this set is basically wanted by every single character that is a preservation unit at the time of making this video. It also increases shield strength, which is like a very valuable asset. And overall, this is a set that you're going to want a lot of anyways. So it's actually worth farming for in the long run. And then as far as the lightning set goes, it increases lightning damage by 10%. If you're not building a lightning DPS, if, like if you're not getting Jinyuan and you're not playing Serval, then this seems kind of useless. And you'd be right because you're not building a lightning damage dealer. But the four pieces, whenever the wearer uses their skill, increases their attack by 20% for one turn. This is actually pretty good, especially if the character you're using is constantly using their skill. If you do happen to get a four set piece of it while you're farming for Purity Palace, it actually is okay to just throw on other characters. And eventually you will definitely want to build lightning damage dealers. But the most efficient set, in my opinion, to farm for is Musketeer of Wild Wheat. Now, this isn't necessarily, or at the moment, it's not best in slot on anyone. However, it's a good set all around. Think of this like Gladiators, where the two-piece has the 18% attack bonus on, on Genshin. This has 12% on Honkai Star Rail. So because of that, and because it also increases your speed by a little bit, don't worry about the basic attack damage, because, I, I mean, basic attacks are already weak as is, but, like, it's kind of nice, I guess. But the speed increase and the attack increase are going to be the biggest things for you. And also, every healer in the game can use Passerby of wandering cloud i know some people don't like this set i don't particularly like this set but outgoing healing bonus is stronger than hp and at the start of battle getting a skill point back is is all right i guess plus one skill point it is nice i'm not going to deny that either way though like your healers are going to want at least two pieces of this and most of your other characters can use two pieces of this set and get a lot of value so basically what you want is a bunch of general set pieces that you can throw on your other characters to make them stronger for the time being by farming up a bunch of wild wheat and let's say you also farmed up genius of brilliant stars you have sila kitted out and then you have this 
this four piece wild wheat that you farmed for Zila before you farmed for the quantum set. That four piece can now go to your other team in Forgotten Hall or to another damage dealer, and they can use it for the time being while you farm up for another set. And that way you still have a character that's capable of dealing damage. Getting something that can give you a high main stat is very important. I know in my March guide, I said effect hit rate, which is what I'm going for, but also lots of preservation characters can use defense. So this is actually an okay piece for me to grab, especially because it has effect resistance, which is good on tanky characters. And so in March's case, I now have 35% at level nine and I can go six levels higher for a lot better of stats and more sustainability. And I can use this on my fire blazer as well. On my Serval, I'm now dealing a lot more damage because I have the four piece set. Granted, it's still a work in progress. As you can see, we're still farming for things but my serval does a lot more damage with the gold band than it does with the four star band because the gold band has just higher stats which means that my serval is able to farm more efficiently and when i do get the pieces that i want my serval's damage is going to jump so high in comparison to what it was before that i'm going to be able to roll all the content now you're also going to want to look into your link ropes and planar spheres basically just your planar ornaments and these are things that you get in the simulated universe the most efficient set to farm is actually very easy and straightforward the most efficient set to farm is fleet of the ageless basically what it's going to do is make it so that whenever the wearer has 120 speed or higher, all allies are going to gain attack. You can kind of think of this set as Noblesse from Genshin if it was always active and could stack with other Noblesse sets. Obviously, the attack bonus isn't as high, but if you don't know what set to put on a character and they have over 120 speed, which any character running speed boots will have, then it's basically a blanket buff to your entire team. This set basically can't be bad on anyone unless they literally just don't meet the speed requirement. And this is a set that you're going to need multiple of later on anyways. So farming simulated universe world three difficulty number two is going to be the most efficient thing that you can do. And also it gives you the uh, the attack for speed at over 120, which is also really good. There are other sets that you can farm, but just for now, while we're still working everything out, if you don't have any characters that you are specifically farming for, and you just want to make sure that you get energy regen ropes or elemental damage spheres and things like that, simulated universe world three difficulty two, definitely the go-to. So that's how I'd recommend farming. I would get your characters at least ascended to 60 so you can unlock their traces or level them to 60 if they are a dedicated damage dealer and they get really really high stats as a result and same thing with light cones you definitely want to level the light cones and then traces or relics or both at the same time Next up, once you have your four characters built that you want to be using to help you farm other things and just I don't know, maybe they're characters you just really enjoy, then I suggest this next step, which is finding more characters that you want to level. The reason for this is actually quite simple. Basically, the hardest content in the game is Forgotten Hall, and eventually, when you get to Memory of Chaos and higher level of Forgotten Halls, you need multiple teams. You are going to need at least eight characters built if you want to successfully get through it while you're under leveled, and maybe when you get to a higher level you don't actually even need eight characters total but it's definitely a good idea to start investing in more characters to try to get them up to 60 following the same process you want to find more characters that you want to level and focus on getting them up so you have at least eight to ten characters total that are at level 60 with their level 60 light cones or a light cone that you can bounce between a couple different characters if you absolutely have to you want to do this in chunks so that way you start to build a more flexible roster you need one team to be fully functional to really take advantage of being able to defend feed content quickly and farm quickly. And after that, you start working on characters that you could substitute in for type advantage or for different types of content that you need them to cover for. Like I said, eight to 10 characters is a good goal to shoot for, primarily focusing on the main stats of your relics. If you somehow have eight to 10 characters built with the right main stats, even if the, the substats aren't complete, if they're built with the right main stats, they're level 60 and you have 60 light cones, now it is a time to start pre-farming. Because when you hit level 50, that is going to be when it starts really curving to become really difficult for you to level up. As you can see, Sila takes 20 of the Voidcast Iron now and conquers Will, which is the even higher level material that you're going to need. And when you get to the next level, it's going to be a lot of the same. You're going to be farming all of these materials to level up a character to 70. I really can't recommend this enough. If you manage to get enough pieces that have decent stats so that way you can keep progressing in the game and you're satisfied with the 4 to 8 to 10 characters that you did end up building, even even just the right main stats on for now, you really should try to pre-farm for these characters going into 70 because the amount of materials that you need to get to 70 drastically increases from the previous ascensions. And I cannot stress this enough. Once you are at the place where you can defeat most 
of the content at your level, that same gear that you have can carry you into the next equilibrium and you will be fine, but you definitely want them to be more survivable and have higher stats and be able to unlock further traces. So with all that in mind, after you've geared out your four to five characters, level up some more characters and their light cones to 60. And once you do that, try to gear them up as well. And once that's done, then you're gonna focus on the original four characters you had and ascend them even further by pre-farming. So that way, when you do hit level 50, if somehow, like I said, you managed to farm everything before then, then it is time officially. Really exciting stuff. But okay, the big question that a lot of people have had on their mind is, is it actually worth it to farm before TR 50? Specifically, is it worth using your Trailblaze fuel before 50? And to that I say, well, honestly, it's kind of it's kind of hard to say, right? Because it's all based on your preference. The thing is at tier 40, you are guaranteed a five star drop from every run that you do. Now, unlike 50 and 60, there is zero chance at you getting two five stars per drop. And people say that is less Trailblaze power efficient. And so you you shouldn't farm for relics and that's fair they're technically correct if you save your trailblaze power until you get to tr 50 you have a chance to get two of these instead of just one but the biggest problem that you're going to run into is scaling with a lot of the later content by waiting until 50. the benefit of the fuel is that it lets you farm everything all at once and just instantly increase the power level of your entire account and while you can wait until you get multiple drops the problem then becomes what if i want to go play simulated universe you can obviously clear simulated universe without all of the gear progression that the game suggests. You can do it with the right buffs. But if you want to go complete the hardest content in the game, if you want to progress Forgotten Hall and get further on in, you're going to need better stats. Unlike Genshin Impact, where you can get carried by reactions, in this game, you need to be carried by stats, and eventually, you're going to have to farm them anyways. In my opinion, the game is much more enjoyable when you're able to find that progression, and if you want to play the game over the next little bit, you might as well start farming now. However, that said, if you don't have a lot of play time in the day and you honestly don't want to play this game that much, then definitely save up your Trailblaze power because technically it is going to be more efficient for you to save up your Trailblaze fuel until level 50. You're getting more drops from Calyxes no matter what. That, that's just how it goes when you get to the next equilibrium level. That's what happens. And technically speaking, it, it is just going to be more efficient no matter what. But do keep in mind that if you do put this off, you're probably going to take another almost two weeks to even get to 50. And if you're enjoying playing the game, and you want to keep progressing, then eventually you are going to need to farm gear. Ultimately, whether or not you should save until TR40 depends on how much you value efficiency versus just having a good time. You're going to be able to do a lot more content over the next little bit if you do farm for relics now. But if you're more worried about getting your money's worth, saving till 50 is definitely going to be a good idea. I personally am farming at 40 because I just want to play the game and I enjoy it and you can start getting your characters kitted out now. So ultimately, it is up to what you prefer, but technically speaking, it is more efficient to farm at 50 and so make what you will of that it's completely up to you but i'm farming now because i'm impatient and i, I want to play the game so anyways if you guys have enjoyed this video make sure to like down below i have a welt guide and a natasha guide coming out very very soon and i'm so excited to share those with you thanks for watching everyone and i'll catch you later